Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to a very special installment of Music and Message here at Hendricks Chapel. Music and Message is a weekly series that features musical performances and spoken reflection from diverse religious and spiritual perspectives. Today's very special program is part of the Malmgren Concert Series supported by the Malmgren Fund. We're excited to have you all here. As we begin, I acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, fire keepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people on whose ancestral lands Syracuse University now stands. My name is Brian Conkle. I serve as Dean of Hendricks Chapel, and thank you to all for being with us, either in person here on campus or with us in spirit through our online broadcast. Before I introduce this week's program, I wish to invite you all to next week's program, May 7th, 4 p.m., where we at Hendricks Chapel launch the Syracuse University commencement activities and celebrate the graduating class of 2023 with our blessing of students. The event is free and open to all, including Syracuse University students, parents, alumni, and community members. The program will include the Hendricks Chapel Choir, spoken reflections from all of our chaplains, and recognition of students. All are invited to tend to send off our students into the next chapter of their lives and to celebrate the ways in which they have been a blessing to us all. Furthermore, as we draw near to commencement day, please let this serve as a reminder that we are excited for a wonderful lineup of concerts and programs already scheduled for the 2023-2024 academic year. So please do stay in touch with Hendricks Chapel by signing up for our emails and newsletters through the chapel website. We plan to start up our fall semester concert programs on September 19th. And in the meantime, all are welcome to enjoy the recordings of past concerts and events on the Hendricks Chapel YouTube channel. For today, we are thrilled to welcome guitarist Ken Meyer to perform for us. Ken is a critically acclaimed musician, a beloved professor in the Setner School of Music in the College of Visual and Performing Arts here at Syracuse University and also at Onondaga Community College. He has performed in some of the world's most prestigious musical venues, recorded on numerous record labels, taught master classes across the country, and he's just a really good guy. He's committed to expanding the repertoire for guitar to borrow the title Ken has given for today's program. He has given more than a dozen world premiere performances of new works, thereby modeling a spirit of collaboration and risk-taking that inspires the next generation of guitar students here at Syracuse University and far beyond. We are delighted and excited and honored for this program. Please join me in welcoming Ken Meyer.
Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for, for coming. Um, I didn't plan to speak all that much uh, today, um, but the first time that I played uh, one of these next pieces by Natalie Draper was here uh, on this stage in a mask uh, during COVID. And um, perhaps we were mentioning that too much, like, oh, a couple years ago when we all had COVID. But I just found it kind of interesting that it's, it's so nice to, to be here with all of you uh, to be playing one of those movements and then two other ones uh, as part of three soliloquies um, to kind of uh, bring this academic year almost to a close, the last day of classes being tomorrow. Um, it was a lovely year to be back and kind of back. So three soliloquies by Natalie Draper. Thank you. 
Amelia Giuliani uh, was the, the daughter of a very I, famous guitarist that, that a lot of people, um, a lot of students play his studies. Uh, he, had a, he has a lovely collection of preludes that are his uh, Opus 48. He was kind of the rock star of his day. Um, in that he trashed hotel rooms, was chased out of countries because he had debts, and was an amazing guitar player. Um, he also had a daughter named Amelia, and she's always been kind of a footnote to Mauro Giuliani, but I find these preludes to be in the spirit of his Opus 48 collection, but he was definitely writing in a very sort of Viennese classical style, and his daughter is, uh, Amelia, is writing in kind of a, a more forward-looking harmonic style, and they're, they're really lovely pieces. Uh, she is a brilliant composer. Um, she did a lot of theme and variations on uh, Bellini opera themes, which was kind of common and kind of popular for composers and guitarists, especially to do back in the, in the 19th century, to have those kind of opera fantasy pieces. Um, and, uh, but these preludes are, are lovely. I hope you enjoy them. There's six of them. They all kind of take a look at a technique, kind of run through it, but end up taking you through a lot of different key areas and, and uh, some, some jarring modulations. They're, they're really interesting. Um, hope, you, hope you enjoy them. Like for the guitarists in the audience, the first one starts in G sharp minor. We, we don't ever play in G sharp minor, except for this.
So the, the title of the program is called Expanding the Repertoire, and I guess that would be the message, just that we seek to include um, underrepresented or, yeah, underrepresented composers. Um, and in this case, today, most of, most of those on the program happen to be female. Um, Manuel de Falla has this little piece called The Homenaje, and it's on, a, on the tomb of Claude Debussy. He wrote it for his friend uh, Debussy when he passed away. And it gets this acclaim of being one of the greatest pieces composed in the 20th century. And there really isn't any rhyme or reason to the set of the next four pieces. Um, you're welcome to clap in between them or wait till the end. Um, but I think all four of these pieces could give the homenaje a run for its money just in terms of beautiful miniatures that really get to the heart of uh, how the guitar speaks, like to the soul of, of the guitar. And not just because she's in the room, but I would also add Natalie's uh, first movement to that also, just a beautiful miniature that really captures the essence of the, of the guitar.
So I just washed them and I can't do a thing. <laughs> This is a really beautiful, powerful piece. Um, I lived in Rochester for a while, and I was at a music store, and I came across this piece for guitar and organ. And I was like, what? There's a piece for guitar and organ. And then I looked, and it was actually written for my teacher, the person I was studying with at the time. So I, I bought the score, and I took it into him, and I said, what is, what is up with this? You know, and he kind of told me the story about uh, how he knew Chris. Uh, my teacher used to teach at the Manhattan School of Music and Chris was a student there. Uh, and he was a really active composer in the New York scene, both for theater and for sort of uptown music, classical music, traditional classical music. Um, sadly, uh, Chris passed away way too soon um, due to the AIDS virus, which claimed a lot of artists in the especially in the early 80s and 90s. Um, he found out about the virus, uh, that he had it, shortly before beginning this piece, and unfortunately passed away shortly after completing it. And it's such a courageous statement for kind of moving through something, um, whatever that is. For Chris, it was, it was the illness. So it begins in a sort of impassioned plea, a little bit of anger, and then I think it kind of moves through um, a bunch of different stages, acceptance, reflection, and ultimately, and this is the real courageous part, like just a, a beautiful celebration, which um, really speaks to his character, I think, though I never met him. I'm really grateful to Annie for inviting me uh, to, to play. Um, and for Dean Conkel also for, for being here and just for, for having me. I'm grateful to you guys for being here. And um, yeah, God is Our Righteousness by Chris de Blasio.